thinking. All right, so welcome to our DIY with she making a zine. Um, so I kind of wanted to start off and ask, like, how many people have heard of zines before? I've like heard of them, but I don't know anything else really about them. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think that's kind of typical. <laughs> <laughs> um, so zines are a pretty counterculture, essentially. They emerged, um, you know, several decades ago, um, it, and especially in like fandom communities. Um, so they were they were doing things like Star Trek fan fiction and fan art and um, different kinds of um, commentary and writing. Um, in more activist cultures, you'll see things from more of like a feminist or um, other activist perspectives where people are advocating for specific things and using zines um, as a way to communicate those messages. Um, and the reason people like zines are because you can make them really quickly and easily and cheaply. Um, so essentially you can make one booklet and then just photocopy it and kind of remake them over and over and over again. And photocopy paper is not as expensive as say like binding a whole book. Um, so that's, I mean, that's essentially what a zine is. Does anyone have questions about that part of it? Um, so tonight we're gonna go over some really simple ways to make your own zine at home. Um, so I have a couple of examples. Um, my first one is kind of a mini book. And it's all handwritten, hand drawn, very simple to make. We'll actually make this one tonight. And then I have one that's more like an accordion fold. So if you go on our Instagram, I actually have like a little gif of it kind of unfolding. <laughs> um, but you can do with this one, you get more pages. So you can do both front and back if you're interested in that. And then if you really end up liking uh, zine making, um, you can actually do kind of a book binding type style. Um, so I use this like bright pink paper because I figured I would I would never use it for anything else. It's like neon pink. <laughs> um, and this is like an idea I've had for a while to make my own role playing game. Um, and I was like, well, maybe if I make the paper that will inspire me to do it. Um, so essentially, it's just some folded over paper with a cardstock um, exterior. And then I've used embroidery floss to just kind of tie it on the side there. Um, each of these types are actually on our Pinterest page, which I'm gonna link to in our chat here. Uh, under our geeky DIY um, Pinterest board. And I've pinned several different ways to make a zine. Um, and then I've also pinned some like examples of what people have done with zine making. Um, tonight we're gonna go over, I think the two most important concepts, which are like the platform on which you make your zine. So the making of the actual physical product and then the content, what inspires you to, um, to, to share with the world. So does everybody have a piece of paper with them? Awesome. Anyone else have a piece of paper with them? I do. Excellent. All right, so I'm gonna assume Stephanie's okay there. So the version that we're gonna make tonight is the first one that I was showing you, the little mini booklet. Um, and is everyone familiar with hamburger and hot dog folds? No. <laughs> uh, how about mountain and valley? Yes. Okay. So <laughs> I'm actually not familiar with the mountain. <laughs> um, <laughs> and valley, but um, hamburger is essentially like the thicker way and hot dog is the thinner way. So like imagine- so this is a hamburger? Yep. And 
this is a hot dog. Yep. Okay. So the hamburger is kind of more like a square and a hot yeah. dog. Plug. Got it. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we're going to start by making a hamburger. Okay. Make our hamburger bowl. I have my hamburger bowl. Kind of looks like the little booklet that I've got going from the other one. Whitney, how are you doing? Good. I'll be honest. I'm eating and watching. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> All right. So once you have your hamburger fold, you're going to unfold it and you'll have the fold in the middle. So it's kind of like that. And then you're going to take the two outer edges and fold them toward the center. And I'll show you what that looks like. Stephanie, you doing okay? Stephanie. All right. So, so like gonna, this, right? Yep. Now you're going to unfold it again. Okay. And then we're gonna fold it hamburger style or hot dog style, sorry. Other way. All right, so if you have your hot dog, let me know. Good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um Gosh, this is where I get a little. All right, so now we're gonna unfold again. <laughs> Basically, we're making a lot of um, marks for ourselves and then we're gonna fold it um, hamburger style in the middle. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is a little bit tricky. And if you have a pair of scissors with you, that's great. If you don't, I'll, you can do the exact same thing, but with um, just like tearing it. All right, so you have your fold and I'm gonna show you fold on this side here. Okay. And then you've got your scissors and we're just gonna cut on this fold to the middle right there. So it's all still attached. You've just got like a little fold there. Or a little cut there. All yes. right. Excellent. All right. So now the tricky part comes. So you'll you'll kind of unfold it. And you'll see you got your thing in the middle there. And then you're gonna kind of push it like that so that you'll see you've got like four pages essentially. Do that again, please. <laughs> yep, yep, no worries. <laughs> so you kind of like push it together so that the little pieces meet and then kind of like fold it back toward you. Oh, wait, maybe it worked. I don't know. Something happened and it's a book. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> I don't know if it was that's the right great. book, but it's a book. <laughs> yeah. So hopefully everyone's looks something like this. Um, so the next thing that we're going to do is you can use any writing material that you like. Um, I have all sorts of crafty stuff, but you can literally do this with like a Sharpie, um, a pencil, whatever you would like to do. Um, I bought these like like a set of like different size black markers that I really like. And they seem to be working really well for creating kind of like those different heading sizes and things. Um, so we're not gonna worry about the front page right now. You can go back and kind of do that on your own. But what we are gonna do is come up with some concepts that we want for future zines, essentially. Um, so this is just gonna be like a brainstorming session. So for your first uh, two open pages, kind of like this, when you first open your, your book, you're gonna write at the top, 
um, the word passion. You can write that in any way you like. You can make it pretty. You can make it not pretty. You could do it like vertical, you know. I did kind of like a, a vertical version there, a little different. All right. Does everybody have that down? Yes. Excellent. So on your next screen or your next page, um, you're gonna leave the so you're gonna leave the, this one here, and then it'll be a blank page next to it, so you have plenty of room. And then when you flip the page, you're gonna write fill a need. All right, and so you should have that somewhere on your next double page. Any questions from the audience so far? Stephanie, if you have questions, you can put it in the chat too. All right, All right. and then on our last open set of pages, we're gonna write in unique knowledge. That right there. So how's everybody doing on that piece? Good. I'm just starting unique knowledge. Excellent. <laughs> on my first one, I spelled it incorrectly because I was like really stressed about getting all the letters in, you know, the amount of room that I had. <laughs> <laughs> And then I forgot a letter. <laughs> so one other thing you can do is kind of like experiment with the paper that you use. Um, I had bought like a sketchbook for an art class I was doing. So on my first couple sets, I use just sketchbook paper, which I think kind of holds up really nicely. It's a little thicker than the the thin uh, printer paper. You could also do like construction paper, um, cardstock, whatever you like the most. And I think for Whitney, you know, you do a lot of stuff with all your pens and things. So you could probably have a lot of fun with. Yeah, I definitely can do hand lettering and things. Yeah, super fun. All right, so you've got your pages, right? Yes. <laughs> All right, so now is the hard part, the brainstorming part. <laughs> so for the, this is actually, I kind of copied this from my, um, my blogging workshop because I kind of felt like these categories captured basically all the different areas that you could think of um, for zine making. Um, so on the passion page, you're going to think about areas where you have a really strong interest, something that you could write a whole zine on, um, maybe a series of zines on, um, <laughs> something that, um, I mean, this is the thing about like nerdy, the nerd world is that we can talk to someone about <laughs> a topic for hours and hours on end and not get bored. So like, what are those for you? That's your passion area. Um, I'm super passionate about, uh, getting people into RPGs that are not D&D. Even though I love D&D, &D, I just think that like there's so many other cool things out there. So many other cool things out there. <laughs> um so then the next one is fill a need. Um so in my my blog presentation, I talked about um blogs that fill like a very specific area. Um I used one website called A Practical Wedding as an example. Um, they are in the big world of like wedding planning. They're all about doing your own thing, not going over budget, like being very practical about what you want. And that's like a very unique, 
like need that they're filling in the world. So like, what are some things that you could do either in your community, in the geek community that would fill a need? Is there a topic people um, want to know more about? Um, you know, is, is there something that your students would be interested in? Um, <laughs> And then the last page is your unique knowledge. So something that you bring specifically that you know about that maybe other people don't know about or that you have a very special perspective on. Um, the example that I used in the blogging workshop was I'm on like a really special um, diet um, for um, digestive issues. And um, a lot of the blogs are all like very, you know, scientific, like this is, you know, beep, beep, robot, um, kind of boring. <laughs> and, um, you know, the blogs that I'm drawn to have like a unique perspective on that where they have the issue, but then they try and take recipes they really like and actually turn it into something you want to eat and they make it more human. So they have this unique knowledge because they have the problem and they're trying to figure out how to deal with it. So we're going to brainstorm for a while. Um, this may get cut in the video because it's not as much fun to watch people brainstorm. But if you have ideas, if you're like, what category should this go into? Um, you know, I have an idea for a zine, but I don't know if it's like really a zine thing. You know, just throw it out there. Talk about what you're thinking about. So like on passion, um, the first thing I'm putting is parks and recreation because <laughs> I'm literally looking at my Swanson pyramid of greatness right now. Um. <laughs> Whitney, are there any passions you would want to share? It would help you if I got off of mute. Um, <laughs> honestly, like a lot of um, of like my video games, so something like um, Animal Crossing or Final Fantasy or things like that. Um, I love getting more people into RPGs. So talking about um, even just playing them, not even jamming in them. Um, mm -hmm would be something really kind of fun like passion wise um i'm also just into like i don't know a lot of different nerdy things so even if it changed up i feel like that would be a fun zine to make too mm -hmm. and tracy did you put anything special down um backyard birding <laughs> nice and horror movies and Dagon and In's Mouth. Okay. Which are Lovecraftian sort of Cthulhu things. Nice. Yeah, I had no idea how many horror games I played until <laughs> we did this horror workshop on, from Pelgrane Press. Yeah, with Pelgrane, yeah. And yeah, they were great. Um, and I was like, oh, wow, I've played more horror games than I like to admit <laughs> yeah i almost exclusively play horror games nice yeah so good society was like a nice refreshing breather yeah yeah <laughs> it's definitely um not horror although we're playing a um i'm playing a pride and prejudice and practical magics with some friends right now and it's oh that's cool very interesting yeah <laughs> Um, yeah, I put down like something that I've been thinking a lot about, which is, um, like gaming and education and like community development, which is something I've been thinking about a lot. Um, what, does, what do you mean by education? So in terms of like changing behaviors. I don't, I don't know how to okay. explain it more than that, but like, so we've got Animal Crossing and then we've got The Sims, which just came out with um, 
eco eco thing. Yeah. 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 And so I can't wait to make my own candles. Right. right. (laughs) (laughs) So I was thinking a lot about like, so you've got, you've basically gamified community development, right? You've, um, you've got that one lot they're going to have where you make like community suggestions on how to improve things. And then with animal crossing, like, basically one of the major goals is to improve the entire island um and i just kind of wonder like what that's teaching people about community development um and how it just like overlooks a lot of the nuance in the challenges you would face to accomplish a lot of the things that you're getting done in those games you know you just build a bridge in animal crossing excellent this is not how it works in real life. <laughs> right. Or this is how it does mirror real life. Or this is how you can incentivize. Right. Yeah. Have you read Reality is Broken? No. I um, love suggestions. Yeah. I actually have a little bit of unique knowledge in gamification and game-based learning. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah. So Reality is Broken. I think you would really enjoy it. It's about how like the structure of games and incentive systems or ranking systems and things like that in games can be used in non-gaming situations yeah um it's a good like intro gamification book awesome i'm gonna add that to my list so has everybody filled in their passion page yes yes Ready ready to move on to fill a need uh, yeah, it might be a little trickier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, and I think one other way that you could think about filling a need is like filling your own personal needs too. Um, I think a lot about like what's going on with quarantine and um, like when I had first started this one as an example I had thought about making it like my own personal art journal that's cool um, yeah so I mean like kind of doing that maybe it's poetry or just like a journaling space um but and I, I think a lot about like the museums that are collecting people who are writing journals or making material during this time and um how it could, this could serve like two needs you could be writing and talking about your observations during quarantine and then filling a need for telling history later on down the road but it's they're both centered around like playing role playing games as um someone who's female or female identifying oh that's awesome Mine are are pretty similar for filling the need. It's just um, creating a a zine for people who aren't normally into specific. Mine's mostly centered around um, fandoms for people who aren't normally into those fandoms or just letting them, introducing them to those fandoms. Oh, that's a fun idea. Yeah. I could see doing like a um, like a swap for that, you know, yeah. kind of like a book swap, except it's a scene swap, and everyone makes something about their fandom and like tries to convince other people to check it like out. Their fandom, yeah, that's cool. I would read that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like a fandom zine about a fandom that I sort of know about or don't know about at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like. We all like have our fandoms that we know and we kind of like grew up around or we just fell into, but there are so many fandoms that it's like, I would love to know about this. What's a good place to get started in it or how to get started in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what do you love about this fandom? So, yeah. And for people who want to start a superhero instructor. Ooh, <laughs> I know a lot about that. So. <laughs> yeah. I was like, "That's an easy one." <laughs> um, or starting a nonprofit—the reality. Yes. <laughs> yes. 
that reality being <laughs> on a nonprofit board. <laughs> yeah. So I was telling Whitney earlier today, I um, someone tried to ask me to chair something this week, but I thought she was asking me to nominate her to chair something. <laughs> and so I did nominate her. And then she was like, no, I meant you. <laughs> Uh, it was really funny <laughs> and slightly embarrassing. Um, <laughs> so if you're ready, go ahead and move on to your unique knowledge, which seems like it could have some overlap with your fill a need. And that's something we found with the blog is that like passion, filling a need and unique knowledge often ended up like overlapping with each other because we're very complicated people who have complicated interests that work together. Anyone have any good ones so far? I wrote down Florida, the good, and scratched out good, <laughs> the bad, and the ugly. I grew up in Florida. And I have many Florida stories. <laughs> like about the time an alligator almost ate my mom. <laughs> oh, I have questions. <laughs> we went on like a 17 mile bike ride, which I do not recommend, especially when you don't regularly bike. And um, it was like spring. So all the alligators were, you know, out and doing their thing my dad convinced us that all the alligators were fake to scare off the other alligators and my mom sat down on a rock midway through the the thing at the like observation deck and there was like an alligator like coming up behind her from the water <laughs> oh my gosh this is terrifying it was terrible <laughs> i'm so glad i left <laughs> Anyone else have some good ones? I feel free to show yours in the camera. I, my camera is probably not very, oh, I don't know. Oh, yours is so neat. I love it. Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, all the other cool I put things. solo travel. Oh, I love that. Because I travel by myself a lot and I really mm -hmm. enjoy it. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. I haven't even, I hadn't even thought of that. Probably because we're all living inside of our houses forever. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. All I can think about is traveling. <laughs> so the other cool thing is you could go back in and do some like doodles if you wanted to. Um, some artwork. I actually bought this cool book that I'm excited to start digging into that I think will be kind of useful for. <gasps> That's very cool. The right. making. How to draw an object. Yeah. It seemed kind of like. Shows you how to draw a rotary phone, which no one will know what that is in <laughs> 10 years. <so. laughs> um, you know, you can also do things like bring in some collage. You can do like mixed media, you know. So with this, like, I I kind of cover my pages. I'm I'm a collagey type person. So, um, but you've got that really nice, nice, neat list you could also do like an image that goes along with it on the right hand side for your page um and then so the neat thing is and i don't do this because you'll have to put it back together but if you really like what you do all you do is unfold your paper and then you put it in a copy machine and you copy the pages however many you want and then you basically remake them I have to remember how I did this. Ha -ha. Then you can make yourself a cover if you want. I've heavily invested in Michael's doc this month. <laughs> so I have a lot of, um, you know, markers and things. 
and you can choose to show your zine to people. You can choose not to show your zine to people. So like I just added like zine brainstorm to the to the front of mine. Nothing fancy. Anyone have questions? <laughs> no. I think I'm good. Okay. So the again, I put everything up on the Pinterest page. So you can go in and get um, the one thing that I, I didn't really go over. I mean, I think the accordion one is pretty self-explanatory. Um, basically cut the paper in half, fold it, and then glue them together. Um, but for the kind of the book binding one, you can go over just kind of how I did that. Basically, I just put three holes here. And Did you then, just cut those with a needle? So I, I actually cut mine. I just went in with my um, scissors and cut like really tiny, um, but it's a little sloppy. You can see it's kind of like pulling over a little bit. It's not perfect. Um, I didn't need it to be perfect. Um, but yeah, you could do, they used to recommend like a really sharp pencil. Um, okay. You could use a needle. Um, they recommended using, like if you don't have, um, they recommended using a brindle, which I had never heard of. Um, I also think you would go in with like an X-Acto blade and do like a really small oh, cut. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, especially if you're doing something where it's not gonna be like really out there and then essentially you just kind of like weave the the embroidery floss or twine or whatever you want to use for that and then tie it off and on the pinterest page i do have a link to like how you do that it's called a saddle stitch book i'm kind of a crafting mad scientist though like if i'm like <laughs> oh I don't have this thing. I'll just like make it up and kind of make it work. Cause usually I'm not like, I don't sell anything on Etsy or, you know, usually it's all just for my own fun and excitement. Um, I was curious, has anybody seen a zine lately, like at conventions or, um, I don't know, craft shows or anything like that? I feel like I have at Gen Con, I feel like little like printed zines are kind of like a um, something that they kind of give as like a handout instead of like a business card for certain businesses or um, like um, especially if like they sell like multiple games or whatever. So something like the um, I feel like the fate or the independent um, yeah. games booth some mm. like, has things like that. Yeah, for um, sure. Yeah, I did see like artist trading zines was kind of a thing that was popular when I was doing some research. Yeah. Um, so like I've seen I've seen them kind of like that uh, lately. Um, I've also seen like I don't know if you necessarily want to call it a zine, um, but people who are self producing their own graphic novel, they were mm. doing a bit more of like the zine style version of it. Yeah, I've seen, I did see at UConn, um, which is in Michigan, a um, one, one independent role playing game that was kind of like this size. Um, that was about, I think punk music um, that, was in like a, a zine format and then um yeah that's like, very on brand yeah, yeah. On, on the back of of my little one that I created earlier I like tell people where else they could find like RPGs and one of the ones that I love is Kickstarter does a um RPG zine quest um and I've bought a lot of those mostly as PDFs though mm -hmm. but some of them are more zine like than others I mean one that I got recently, like it was very clearly all hand drawn, handwritten, 
whether they did it like handwriting on like an iPad or something or just scanned it in, but it, it was really neat looking. <clears throat> so that's all I have for scene making. Thank you so much. You made one. <laughs> I know. I love making things. And I actually think it would be, this is not for zines, but it would be really cute for my students to make little study guides at the end of each unit and then have like a little notebook full of tiny like chemistry zines. Yeah. Yeah. That would be really adorable. I love yeah. that. <laughs> um, so if you do make zines, take pictures, put them online, tag us in them. Um, I've done a couple videos of the ones that I've made just on our Instagram. So you can see like what they look like a little more tactily. You can't like actually feel them, um, right now, but have fun, um, experiment. I really want to see everybody's final products. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks. Have a good night, everyone. Thanks, Stephanie. Bye. Bye. <laughs>